as a second treatment option that we can do is, is we did passive physiologicals, now we're going to do passive accessories. And we've done our examination, we've done our palpation, and now we're going to uh, focus on their, their two ways that we can do different passive accessory movements where we can do central PAs and unilateral PAs. The first thing I'm going to show is let's say we had a patient with upper cervical symptoms, headaches, we did our active range of motion and found some positive signs. Now we're going to try to be as specific as we can at to which level of the upper cervical spine is the pain generator. So we're going to look at O1, 1, 2, and 2, 3. And there's a nice way that we can differentiate between those uh, three levels. So let's say the patient has pain on the right side in there suboccipital area. To palpate O1, I'm going to go lateral to, to C2, going to find the mastoid process, come medial to that, and here I'm going to have to go at a bit of an angle to go to the patient's, think of as if you're going to the patient's eye level, and going to go deep and going to palpate O1. And again, feeling for R1, where their pain is, stiffness, quality of movement. So that will be O1. Then to palpate C2-3, I'm going to find the spinous process of C2. I'm going to go to the articular pillar of C2 and do a unilateral PA. Again, feeling for R1 going to R2, trying to find their, their symptoms, their reproduction of their pain. That's C2-3. To get at C1-2, what I'm going to add, I'm going to ask the patient to turn their head to their right, about 30 to 40 degrees, maintain my hand on the articular pillar of C2, and do a straight PA again. And that will be C1-2. Making sure I'm not angling, I'm not going into an angle, I'm just doing a straight PA. And that will, if that's their most pain provocative compared to the other levels, then we, know, then we can say that that um, C12 is, is what's coming through their headache. So we're looking for their symptoms. Now other techniques that I talked about earlier, doing central PAs and unilateral PAs, these can be at any level from C2 all the way down to C7. So going through the different grades of movement, I'm going to pick C2. What you want to do to, to kind of get a good purchase, because sometimes the spinous process can be sensitive to touch, especially if someone's in pain just lying here, they're going to be a little hypersensitive. So you want to make sure that you can try and relax their neck muscles, their paraspi cervical paraspinal muscles, so what you can do to get a, a good feel on, on their spinous process is get a good purchase is just slacken their, 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 their muscles a little bit so then you can really get a better feel for their spinous process. So here I'm going to feel for where R1 is and if I'm going to do a grade 1 I'm just going to do very small amplitude again talking to the patient. So this is a very highly irritable patient in terms of pain. I'm just trying to affect a neurophysiological uh, mechanism that may be contributing to their pain. For grade two, I'm going to go back to R1, come off of it, and then just doing a larger amplitude. Almost getting to R1, but not quite. So just staying at that resistance-free range. Now with grade three, going to feel for R1, come down all the way to R2, it's nice and stiff, come off, and then I'm going to do a large amplitude, grade three, and about you know 50% or so into the range. I'm doing a little bit of a what we call a liftoff technique, so I can I can really kind of get a feel for the movement, and he's quite stiff in C2. And then for a grade four, I'm going to take it to the limit and take it 
at its end range. And trying to use my body, trying not to be too thummy, and taking it to its end range. So those are passive accessory doing central PAs. Doing unilaterals, very simple to what we're doing. I'm going to mobilize C23. Again, going through the uh, different grades. Find your C2 spinous process. Go lateral to that spinous process. Kind of get that, pick up some of that soft tissue, especially someone who has a thick neck, to kind of get that soft tissue on slack so you can get a better feel for that resistance in terms of maybe the joint resistance getting on the articular pillar, and then feeling for where R1 is, and then going to R2. Again, communicating with the patient. Let me know when you first feel any symptoms, any of your symptoms. And it's, you, it's good to use symptoms rather than pain, because some patients may come in and they don't, they're not really complaining of pain. They're complaining of this deep ache in their neck. And so if you keep using the word pain, they might be saying, this guy's not listening to me. So it's good to use their terminology. Feeling for R1, coming off. Grade 1, very small amplitude. Grade 3, going to R1, coming off. A larger amplitude, doing a grade 3. I mean, excuse me, a grade 2, short of R1. So this is a, a grade 2. Coming to R1, taking it all the way down to R2, coming off. And now doing, kind of getting a per better purchase and doing a, a grade 3. So doing a grade 3 at C23, grade 3, so we're going 50% into the range past R1, so feeling for R1, going all the way down to R2, coming off, and then doing a large amplitude. Again, communicating with the patient, how are you doing, what's going on with your symptoms, any change. And one thing that, to, to just give you a, a little bit of advice when you're doing this, you want to communicate, if the patient says, yeah, that hurts, you want to ask, well, what hurts? And if it says, it's my pain, then ask them, is it in rhythm with your pressure? Or is it something that's building up over time? If it's in rhythm with your pressure where the pain comes on and comes off, you know, you probably likely, that's something the joint wants and you should continue doing. If it just seems to increase in intensity as you keep going, going, then you may want to back off, decrease the grade, and start off more at a lighter grade and maybe go further into the range as the pain gets better. So that was a grade three, and then getting into a grade four, getting at the end range, and it's a small amplitude. Again, communicating what's happening, I'm using my body, relaxing my hands. And so those are grade ones through four for central PAs and unilateral PAs. Now we're going to show one last technique, a little bit more of an aggressive technique, where we're going to be specific to a level and doing a specific cervical rotation using passive accessory movement. So let's say the patient, you've worked on them, you've done your unilaterals, you've done centrals. They still seem to have that last bit of, uh, you know, when I turn here, I just, it just feels stuck. So to be more aggressive, and let's say you found that level, whatever it might be, I'm going to pick with Jason, like C4-5 or so. I'm going to get on the articular pillar of C4-5, do that PA, then have him rotate into my hand. So go ahead and rotate to your right. So I'm going to feel that, and I'm going to do the PA in that end range rotation. So this is for that very stiff, dominant, non-irritable, you're just trying to get that last piece of rotation, so you need to put them in a, in a physiological cervical rotation with a passive accessory. And so this is an end range C4-5 local cervical rotation. 